emotionally high or low if I'm, you know, stressed or something. Um, it's It calms me down. It lets me do something with my hands. Um, I'm a very tactile, um, artistic kind of person. I like to be... I like to be elbow deep in blue or um, or something. I'm always I've got some kind of craft going on. I'm like I made the lampshade and, and stuff like that. It's um, so yeah, it, it's it's a therapy definitely for me. Um, mm-hmm. Especially if I'm like I said stressed out, I'll just take a while away and go somewhere and make a um, a bracelet or something. I can come out and wear it, and it's it's um. I have a few things that are very sentimental for me because I made them when I was stressed. Um, oh, okay. So, so it, uh, yeah, uh, uh, go ahead, please. Oh, um, I've also made um, diabetic alert bracelets for myself. Um, so that's been another way that it's been really handy is um, I don't have to wear the boring <laughs> uh-huh. um, drugstore kind, and I can make something that has pink in it because I'm a pink person. Um, or, you know, anything to match any of my clothing. So um, that's made me much better about wearing my medical alert bracelets because I used to not, because they were boring. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. Exactly. Uh, I mean, do you make any kind of uh, diabetes bra- alert bracelets or something like this, even for charities? Do you raise any kind of money, you know, making those bracelets and collecting some money and giving it to some charity? I have tried. Um, um, I make my uh, my bracelets very very inexpensive. Um, the medical art ones, uh-huh. because um, I barely charge any more than my cost because it's um it's an outreach for me. Um, if you want to find um, stuff like this online, you're gonna pay probably two three four times what I charge. Mm-hmm. And so I want to be able to get pretty things like this out there so that people will do it and they'll wear it because it's so important to wear these. Um, so I, I really don't donate so much to charity with my diabetes alert bracelets, but it's more of um, a charity in itself. Um, but then um, I do have a, a line of purple jewelry that um, it's um, domestic violence awareness. And there's um, there's a domestic violence charity in my hometown that I'm um, involved in. very fond of. And so I um, donate proceeds from those things. That's very good. That's very good. So um, the other question is, I, you also wrote in your blog that you had this PCOS. Yes. So can you please explain that? Yes. Um, it's polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, one of the oh, the obvious side effect is that you're the obvious symptom is that you get big cysts on your ovaries, um, and it makes it difficult to get pregnant. But mm. Another one is um, insulin resistance, mm-hmm. which is a whole lot of fun when you're also insulin dependent. Depending. So I don't make insulin, and so I shoot insulin into myself, but my body doesn't know how to use it. Um, so that's one of the reasons that I'm on a lot of insulin. Um, doctors are always shocked when I tell them my ratios and stuff because they're, I take a lot of insulin. Mm-hmm. Uh, at one point, we were wondering how I would... Uh, how I'd come up with a, a food ratio because I was three to one and it didn't seem to be working and they were worried that if I had to go any lower, I you can't go a whole lot lower than that. So, I don't know mm-hmm. higher. Yes. Um, so, uh, the other thing is, so uh, what are, I mean, what are some of the things that you have to watch out when you have PCOS as a diabetic? Well, for me, it's been very difficult because my A1C has never, ever, ever, ever been under 8. Ever. Um, and I want children, and they don't want to give you um, the help you need until your A1Cs are lower. Um, I did find one doctor who finally decided that um, I was close enough and that he was going to go ahead and support it. Um, and I finally got started being allowed to take some fertility medication. Um but I was seeing a reproductive endocrinologist, and he wanted my A1C under 7. Mm-hmm. But with insulin resistance, it's almost impossible. Um, I am obsessed with my Dexcom and my pump now, and it just doesn't seem possible. Um, so that was, it's a vicious cycle, because with, I can't get the PCOS under control, mm-hmm. I can't get the diabetes under control, and I can't get the diabetes under control until the PCOS is under control. So it's just been, you know, a, a vicious, really unfair cycle. 
So it's taking time, little time. Yes. Okay. So uh, the other thing, the other question here is uh, some of the things that you learn hard way in this 12 years with your diabetes. Um, Self-reliance, for sure. Um, I was diagnosed in an age that's kind of difficult for parents of diabetics, I think, um, because I was 12 and I was almost a teenager and I was, you know, I, I can take care of myself. I'm a big girl now. Um, and to an extent, I needed to because it was only going to be another, you know, five or six years before I was out of the house. Um, but in some ways, I was still very young, and I still needed to be um, to be taken care of. And so I think it was a really difficult thing for my parents to know how to strike that balance with me, um, how to be um, how to be a grown up and how to still be a child. Um, so I definitely learned the hard way that I had to take care of myself. Um, young. I mean, and that's a really difficult thing for someone who's, I was in the marching band and, um, you know, I had to be constantly aware of the way I felt at any given time. And, um, um, uh -huh. yeah, that, that was the, the toughest thing to learn. So that's, that's very good. And your final message to the diabetic community out there. Oh, goodness. Um, he says, hey guys, <laughs> um, final message. I mean, I guess the most important thing is that you're not alone and um, anything you've gone through, if I can't relate, somebody else can. So just reach out. Um, don't be afraid to talk about it. Talk about it with people who aren't diabetic because chances are they've got something in their life that they think sucks too. And, um, and you'll, they'll, they'll be there for you. You know, they don't have to understand exactly to understand enough. So don't be afraid to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you, Katie, for being on the show and sharing your experiences with the community out there. It means a lot to the community. And thank you so much. And you have a nice day. Hey guys, hey. everyone listening to the show, please go through our diabetes recipe, diabetes exercise, and also diabetes tip for today. And if you want to receive this to your inbox, please subscribe to your email address and you will receive them daily to your inbox. Thank you so much and you guys have a nice day.